Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da Habita fila continue on in our revision of Umda We reach the 8th hadith An Humran Mawla Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma Anhu ra Uthman da'a bi wudu'in Fa afraga ala yadayhi min ina'ihi Fa ghazaluhuma thalatha marrat ثم أدخل يمينه في الوضوء ثم تمدمد واستنشق واستنثر ثم غزل وجهه ثلاثا ويديه لمرفقين ثلاثة ثم مسى برأسه ثم غزل كلتا رجليه ثلاثا ثم قال رأيت نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يتوضى نحو الوضوء هذا وقال من توضأ نحو وضوئي هذا ثم صلى ركعتين لا يحدثه لا يحدث فيهما نفسه غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبي أخرجه بخاري ومسلم This is a hadith of Bukhari and Muslim and we'll just quickly translate it and then we'll go to the next hadith uh, So this hadith of uh, Humran Mawla Uthman the freed uh, slave of Uthman Ibn Affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma He said that I saw Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu uh, Call for uh, You know uh, A water container uh, And He poured it On his hand uh, From the The water vessel And he washed them Both three times then he entered his right hand into the water container and then he made tamadmad, meaning he put water and rinsed his mouth, was stanshak, put in his nose, was stentar, to blow it out. Uh, then he washed his face three times and his hand up to his elbow three times. Then he wiped his head. Then he washed both of the uh, both of his his legs three times. Then he said, "Ra'aytu Nabiya sallallahu alaihi wasallam." I saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam make wudu like the wudu that I just made, and say, "Whoever makes wudu like I just performed," and then they pray two prayer units, rakatain. And does not have hadith and nafs, meaning they don't, they're, they're concentrated and they don't uh, speak to themselves and get distracted in their prayer. Then Allah will, uh, then their sins will be forgiven, their previous sins will be forgiven. And this is a Bukhari Muslim. The next hadith, An Amr ibn Yahya al Mazidi, An Abihi, Qala Shahid to Amr ibn Abi Hassan. سأل عبد الله بن uh, عبد الله ابن زيد عن وضوء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فدعا بتور من ماء فتوضأ لهم وضوء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأكفأ على يديه من التور من التور فغزل يديه ثلاثا ثم أدخل يده في في التور في التور فمضمض واستنشق واستنثر ثلاثا بثلاث غرفات ثم أدخل يده فغزل وجهه ثلاثا ثم أدخل يديه فغزلهما مرتين إلى مرفقين ثم أدخل يده فمسها رأسه فأقبل بهما وأدبر مرة واحدة ثم غزل رجليه آه and this is Akhrajuhu Bukhari wa Muslim. This is Bukhari and Muslim. And in another narration, Bada bi muqaddama rasihi thumma hatta dhahaba bihima ila qafahu thumma raddahuma hatta raja'a ila makan aladhi bada'a min. Wa fi ruwaya, in another narration, Atana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa akhrajna lahu ma'a fi tur min sufri. 
uh, in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, this hadith uh, of Amr ibn Yahya al-Mazini, on, uh, that was narrated on his father, he said that I saw Amr ibn Abi Hassan ask Abdullah ibn Zayd about the wudu of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so then he uh, called for a, a vessel of water and he made uh, the wudu of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, you know, had poured the water on his hand from the vessel and he washed uh, his hands three times. Then he entered his hand into the vessel and he took uh, three handfuls and made, uh, he washed his, his nose and his, uh, uh, you know, washed his mouth and it, took it in his nose and blew it out of his nose three times with three handfuls. Then he entered his hand back into it and he washed his face three times. Then he put his hand back in it and he uh, washed his feet or washed up to his elbows three, uh, two, time, two times. Then he entered his hand into it and he uh, wiped his head and then he, you know, to the back of his, from the beginning to the back and he did that and returned and he did that one time and then he washed his feet. Uh, I, so, in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Amr ibn Yahya al-Mazini, and then there were some other narrations that which detailed the returning the, the palms back to the front and the uh, detailed about the containers. Uh, from the fawaid of this hadith, or these two hadith and the, the various narrations, we find, first, that one of the benefits is ta'lim bifil, is to teach with, by actions. So, for example, uh, here, they asked about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's wudu, and so he showed them. And this was the best way that the people could see and illustrate, because as I believe that I repeated some of the lines, I got lost, especially with these glasses, uh, that by showing is the best way to make ta'lim. And so this hadith illustrates for us that very the very importance of that. And that's one of the benefits of this hadith. Another benefit is the importance of spreading knowledge by statements and actions. And this was also illustrated from this hadith because this is a hadith they asked, they were uh, seeking knowledge, they were seeking benef al-manafia, knowledge of the shirr, knowledge of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so it was illustrated to them, this ilm was uh, spoken to them and illustrated for them. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows the recommendation that is recommended to wash the hands three times before entering them into the water, that this is mustahab, this is from the mustahabat, then we talk about the furud, those things that are obligatory, as far as the wudu, that's not from the obligatory, but that's the mustahab, to wash your hands uh, three times before entering the container. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows that it is legislated to make uh, tamadmad wa istinshaq, uh, before washing the rest of the face, meaning that to wash the mouth and the nose before the rest of the face. Uh, and another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows that also the, that is mashroor or legislated to combine between washing the mouth and the nose 
with one handful of water so that you take it all in with one handful of water. Or you could do it separately and they're both mishru'ah, they're both permissible. And uh, no, they're both uh, mishru'ah. And another benefit of this hadith is that the fir- we learn also that the first uh, furud or uh, thing which is uh, fard or an obligation to wash in the wudu is to wash the uh, face. And that means you know, all that's included in the face. The nose is a part of the face and the mouth. And the second is the washing the hands to the elbows. That this is also from the furud. So that's the the first is that we wash the face. The second is we wash the hands to the elbow. And the third is the uh, to wipe the head. And that's one time. And the fourth is to uh, to wash the feet up to the ankles. And this had in the second hadith, the hadith of Abdullah bin Zaid, this illustrated for uh, illustrates for us the characteristic of how to wipe the head for the wudu. Uh, also from these uh, a hadith. We also learned the uh, that is recommended to wash uh, all of those limbs for wudu three times, uh, except of course the ras, the head. Uh, those are some of the main benefits, and there are many countless benefits. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.